Welcome back to First Year in Medical Device Sales. I am your host, Jacob McLaughlin, and I'm so excited to be coming to you all this evening. As you can see in the background, we are filming this tonight because I will be heading out to California, have a conference out there, and doing a little bit of work trips out there. So we're going to be making the travel. So when you're listening to this, I am somewhere in California, uh, living that California life. But I wanted to make sure to get you all a podcast, get you an episode. And this is something that I've been getting a lot of messages about. So I wanted to make sure that I get you guys this tonight. But one thing I do want to just say is just thank you to everyone who's reaching out, that's listening. I'm hoping that this is just providing you value. And by the messages that I'm getting, it is. So again, I'm just so thankful to have you all. And I'm so glad that this is being a positive impact on your life because that's what it is. Because for me, you guys winning, I'm not losing. We can all win. And that's what I hope you all get from this podcast. So I just wanted to put that out there because Literally, the messages I get every single day, it means the world. I'm so glad that it's been helpful. I'm so glad that you're using some of the tips that we're giving and that it's helping your territories. It's helping you progress in your career. And that's why I wanted to make this episode tonight. It's my advice to associate sales reps in medical device sales. This last week, I actually had multiple people reach out to me and they're like, hey, Jacob, this is my first week. Hey, this is my first day. Hey, I found you literally three days ago, or I just found you and I'm in my first three months of med device sales. And there's just so much going on. And I think about my first three months in med device sales. Now, granted, I I was very fortunate. I came in as a full line rep right away. I skipped the associate sales rep role. But I, I remember being a full line rep, but having my first three months, six months, nine months. I think it, it goes for everybody. The only difference for me was I had an actual quota that I had to hit. I had all the responsibility on. But again, it doesn't take away when you're a rep and you're an associate sales rep, you still have a bunch of responsibility. You have a lot of people to answer to. And so I just wanted to give my helpful advice for you all to the new people listening that I'm just hoping that this gives you a chance to breathe, that it gives you some confidence, that it just makes you know that you're not alone. Because again, so many times people will reach out to me and and it's very humbling and I I very much appreciate it where they're like, oh my gosh, how'd you do this, all this stuff. I'm a human just like everybody else is, just like every guest that you see that we have on, we all talk about it off camera and on camera. We have the same struggles that you all do. It's just being able to, how do you handle them? How are you able to be able to get help from those? And that's what this is all about. So that's why I wanted to make this episode is just to have you all know that you are not alone, that you can be successful in medical device sales and that you are just part of the journey because number one, you are going to be drinking from that fire hose. If you are in week one, three, five, six, if you are in month six, you're probably still drinking from a fire hose, especially depending on what division you are in. And so the reason I'm just saying this to you all, you're probably living in it and you're shaking your head and you're like, yep, that's me. I don't even know up from down. Sometimes when I wake up, I'm still dreaming about what I was learning yesterday. I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to even be selling tomorrow. What is going on with my life, right? Um, because we we get a lot of people hired and then they go to training and they're like texting me and they're like, you were right about this fire hose thing or there's so much information and, and it is a lot of information. The thing I just need you all to understand is to give yourself grace, to let yourself breathe. And that's the number one thing I have is just breathe. Breathe for a second because I remember when I first got in, my like the first six months, my head hurt from staring at screens, from reading. I would literally wake up at 4 a.m. I would go to the gym so I could get to the gym and get my workout done by about 5.30. Usually if I had training, I would go around 6 o'clock. Sometimes I was at the uh, hospital at 6 a.m. so I could be for the 7 a.m. surgery because again, I was new, didn't know where I was going. I was trying to learn everything, needed to go where SPD was, all the good stuff. And then I'd be there at 7 o'clock and we would work a full day till 5 or 6 o'clock at night. I would go home, eat dinner, and walk my dog. And then I would literally just be doing work and studying my products, studying my territories, looking at my notes, looking at the anatomy. And I'd be doing that till 8 or 9 o'clock at night. And the reason I'm telling you that is I did that for the first six months. That's how I had success so fast. Because what most people were doing was just trying to do the training. And they're like, this is too much. I just can't do it. And then they would just stop. Right. And now again, I'm telling you to breathe, take a breath. Everyone's going to be able to handle stuff at a different portion. But for me, it was, I'm a very like type A personality. I get it done. I'm going to be the best at what I do. I want to be the best. I want to make sure that I perform for the people that I'm working with. I want to make sure I'm performing for the patient on the table. I want to make sure that I can come in and prove myself and know that everybody knows that I was a good hire for them and that I can be an asset to this team. Right. But the reason I'm telling you all that is you need to breathe every once in a while because if not, it's going to be a lot. You're learning the new language. Like I said, you need to figure out where you're going, where the hospitals are, who, who you need to talk to at the hospitals. Where is SPD? What is SPD? 
you know, um, like where, who's your surgeons? Who's their surgery schedulers? And then like every surgeon, what's their preference? What's their glove size? What's their, what do they are like? One likes to talk to you this, the other one likes to talk to you like this. The other one likes this music. The other one doesn't want any music. The other one wants you to sit there in a corner. The other one wants you to talk. There's just so much. And so the reason I'm just telling you that, breathe, chill, take a moment to put your phone away. Because what I had to start doing once I was able to stop working so much and stop being like, oh, I need to breathe, was like after seven o'clock, put my phone down. And okay, when I wake up in the morning, it will be there. But so many people will like have it and they'll have it glued. Now, again, if you're brand new in med device sales and some things you have to have, you have to have it on you. Like, again, that's why I'm saying the first six months. But when you're coming into this industry, there is just going to be a lot. And let me just tell you guys, you are going to be overwhelmed. And that's okay. I was overwhelmed. It's okay right? You're going to figure it out. That's where I just come in here and I just want you to say, I'm going to take each day by day. Because if you look at the mountain like anything in life, if you look out Mount Everest, when you're at the bottom, it seems impossible. You just focus on taking one step at a time, day by day. You'll be pretty surprised where you're at in a year and how comfortable you feel. Everything that is new is scary. Change is scary for a lot of people. And you're in it right now. So I just want to, whoever I'm talking to, I just want you to know it and say, it's okay. It's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to feel lost. It's okay to be, I can sit here and tell you, I know you guys are like, did I make a mistake? Am I in over my head? Can this actually work? I'm here to tell you that's normal. So I just want to hopefully give you some encouragement to be like, you're not alone. You're not crazy. It's not just you. This is literally every single person I've ever helped break into med device sales. It was me, right? So I wanted to say that, but Going back to focus on learning on getting every day. So just take each day by day. But what I just focused on was, can I get a little better every single day? Can I learn something each and every day? If you just focus on learning each and every single day of your life in med device sales, I will promise you, you will be the best rep in the industry. Because the thing I see is so many people will go and then after they get in for a year, they're like, oh, just chilling. And the people that are just chilling are the people that are getting beat. Um, I can just sit here and tell you like, the reason we continue to keep having success in med device sales, how we continue to help other people have success in medical device sales is, for example, when they're in final interviews, I tell them most people, when they get told they're the favorite, they're like, got it in the bag. I'm like, you need to act like you don't have anything in the bag that they told you you're the actually least favorite and that you need to go put your foot on the gas and crush. That's our mindset for it. It's the same thing in med device sales. Can I just be learning every single day, whether that's your territory, whether that's a person inside your territory, whether that's a surgeon, whether that's research, whether that's a new product, whether that's something that can help you grow each and every day, being in the industry for three and a half years, continue to grow, being a regional sales manager, running the West, I'm still learning every single day, just like I was three and a half years ago, right? So that's what I want you to be encouraged on and and focus on. You're not going to learn it all today. But if you can just focus on getting better each and every day, and you can focus on learning something every single day, and then again, continue to check back. Hey, where am I six months ago? Where am I three months ago? And continue to reflect and continue to grow. You will do just fine in this industry. Now, number three, what I see in associates that we have a lot of success with, like again, we've had associates that we've helped go from associate sales reps to full line reps in under 12 months. Again, you'll hear a lot of times, that's impossible. Well, it's all impossible until you do it right? And then it's possible. So the reason I'm saying that is because if you are a self-starter, if you become an asset to your team, if your TM does not have to tell you to go run certain trades, you see it on the schedule, you can actually just go do it. If you can go see what your list is that you have to do every single week because you've been in for a couple months now, and you can continue to show up and show that you're an asset, continue to be show that you can be trusted, that you don't need your hand held, you will have success and you'll be able to progress your career very quickly because that's what I see the people who struggle with is the person who gets told the same thing four times and they still don't do it. That's where territory managers and people in med device sales will have their, they will just lose it on you is because just like in surgery, if a surgeon tells you once, they expect you to write it down and remember that because they don't want to have to keep reminding you because they're trying to focus on the patient. If a manager has to tell you once, okay. If a manager has to tell you twice, you better make sure that you write it down. If a manager has to tell you a third or a fourth or a fifth time, whether that's something on a procedure or that's something on this, and you're not doing the proactive steps of trying to learn it, train it, call other reps, talk to other people, and you're not doing that, you will not last very long or you will be the reps that I've seen that have been associates for two plus years. 
You've been an associate for two years, two and a half years, three years. And then you apply for full line rep roles in your division that you've been there for two, two and a half, three years, and you're losing to people that aren't in your division. Why? It's not fair. No, it's because you haven't done the work. They don't trust you. I can just sit here and tell you, if you've been in for two, three years and you're an associate and you're getting beat out by people that are in your division, let me just sit here and tell you, if you're like, I can't move, I'm w- not willing to move, and it's only this place and you have to wait someone out, that's the only exception. But otherwise, if you've been in for three years, two and a half years, three years for an associate, and you're not getting moved in, and you're getting beat out by people that are in your, like out of your division coming into your division for full line rep roles, it is because those managers don't trust you. They don't believe that you could actually go and run a territory by yourself. And that's a thing where you have to reflect on you because going back to if you're a self-starter, if you're always reflecting on yourself, if you can be like, hey, I did a lunch. Did I get better? Did I do this? That's where that's never going to happen. And so going on to that is the next one is being a resource, being able to contribute to your team. Are you running in trades for team members? Like, right? Your job as the associate, which is very hard for many associates to get this because I hear it all the time. Jacob, I'm just running trades and I'm just doing some lunches and I'm just case covering. And I'm like, yep. That's what your job description is. That's what you were hired to do. You literally were there to keep the existing existing business so the rep can go grow the business, aka go get new surgeons, do all the conversions, be at new cases, grow the actual business. You're there to maintain it. That's why they're paying you, right? But then what happens is I'll have associates call me and they'll be like, I've been in for six months and my territory manager doesn't even run a tray anymore. It's only me. And I'm like, Yep, that's what your job description is, right? So here's the whole thing. Do I hope that your territory managers are doing the job with you and running trades and doing the stuff? I hope so. But the reality of it is, is if they're so busy, they're growing the territory, that is your job. And that's what you're supposed to do. The reason I'm just saying that is not being entitled saying, hey, this is what I'm here. I'm here to grow our territory and I'm here to be a resource to our territory. Because if you can go run those trades, if you can be proactive, you see surgeries and then you already run the trades before they even text you. They're like, man, John or Sarah or Greg or Whoever it is, Shania, she's, oh, they're just crushing it. They are just on top of it. That's how you stand out. Then from there, okay, say you have a day because I see this all the time in med device sales, especially with associates. They'll be like, oh, got done. And then TMs will be like, oh, good job. Go have fun. And it's 11 o'clock. And they're like, I'm going to go home and watch Netflix. But the people we see that have a lot of success, what do they not do? They don't go home and watch Netflix. They go stay out in the field till four or five. And it's because now they're trying to go prospect. They're trying to go get their own uh, lunches and own surgeons and their own doctors because going back to everything we talked about, if you can do the job to get the job, it's pretty easy, right? So for example, if you're an associate, but you're able to go get lunches set, you're able to go do lunches on your own eventually, and you're able to actually even close your own doctor and help the territory. What did you just show? You just showed you're a massive asset and you just showed that you can do a lot what the reps do, aka. So when you're ready for that time to go progress, hey, there you go. Now here's my advice to your associates. If you are doing that, make sure you are tracking that. Because guess what? When you go from an associate to go to be a full-line rep, they're going to ask you about that. If you can say, yeah, I was able to grow our territory because of the surgeons I got by 12%, or I was able to grab a doctor where I did it all by myself with no help. I cold called them on my own, and we brought them in, and they do $300,000 to the business, which will be this percent lift. That's huge. So again, just being able to show that you can do the job to get the job, that's going to be the biggest thing I can tell you is be the asset Try to figure out what the reps are doing. Do your job really great. And then when you get the opportunity, be a self-starter. Go ask, can I go and do a lunch, right? Because I've seen where a lot of times in some med device companies, if they have a real go-getter, they'll be like, hey, this your associate, we have a big bag. This product line for us is pretty much non-existent. It is all yours. And you will get the percent of whatever you bring in off that. And then that's like their opportunity to be like, okay. And this happens to a lot of associates and they'll give that opportunity and the associate will be like, well, I'm not going to sell it anyway. So they just don't. And then again, going back to it doesn't show that you're a self-starter on the team compared to the ones we've seen that have progressed to full line reps very quickly. They're like, oh, this is great. They go and schedule lunches. And then the first two months, they got somebody. And they're like, that was somebody who had they had no business for, but they gave you the opportunity and you went and capitalized. Why? Because you're a self-starter. Why? Because you went and did a lunch, even though you didn't know how to do a lunch and you went and figured it out, right? And it's all trial and error and taking time and learning this stuff. But that's what I can sit here and tell you. If you want to have success in medical device sales, if you want to continue to grow your career and be successful in this industry, you got to be a self-starter. You got to be proactive. You got to figure out what the job is and then you got to go do the job. The last thing I will say on that piece is from an associate, we've had conversations with some associates where territory managers will try to dictate and be like, no, you can't do that. 
I won't allow that. I don't want that. The whole conversation is what I can sit here and tell you is I've watched this happen. And I've personally helped coach people through this specific sp- situation is when they have a very bad territory manager who doesn't perform or is lazy or whatever it is. And they are an associate who's a self-starter, a go-getter. They want to get the most out of it. Now, the territory manager either doesn't want to watch them perform or they get intimidated and they'll be like, no, don't do any of this. And like, for example, that's the conversation of where the associate might be having to have a conversation with the RM and be like, hey, I'm trying to do this, but they're telling me not to. And that's the job of the regional or the district manager to be able to be like, okay, no, I don't think you should do this. Or, hey, I think it, this should, I, maybe we should have a conversation together. Sometimes that can be uncomfortable. Sometimes that can be like, oh, this rep's not performing, but this is going back to everything I teach and what, why we do what we do and why we have our podcast and why we're doing it. There's a lot of people in med device sales. And it's what I, I just had a talk with a, a guy today about it. There's a lot of people in med device sales. Guess what? There's not a lot of top 10 performers in med device sales. Why? There's only 10 of them in each company each year. That's not the majority of the reps. The reason I just said that, that's who you hopefully learn from. It's what we've been able to do. It's what I've been able to do. It's why I make these podcasts for you all and try to do what I've been able to have success and being able to teach other people how to success. And we do this every single day. But the reason I'm just telling you, yeah, there's a lot of managers. There's a lot of TMs. There's a lot of people in med device sales that are just average in this industry. And that is is what it is. And a lot of times people, I can sit here and tell you because I've lived it my whole life since being in this industry, I still get DMs to my LinkedIn this day, like of people being like, you need to stop doing this or you can't do this or they get intimidated and then they try to tell you what you can't do. They try to put you down. They try to put you in a box and you just can't listen. It goes back to what we always say. One of my favorite lines, I'm going to say it almost every podcast, probably for the rest of my life, is eagles don't fly with pigeons. If you are trying to make an impact in this industry, if you are trying to go and make an impact in your life, in your own life, guess what? There are going to be people who don't like it because I can sit here and tell you, even though we've had success and even though we are able to show it and we put it all out for free, I still have people on a weekly basis tell me why I suck, why I'm not good at what I do, all the best and all the stuff that's in med device sales. And my hilarious point is majority of the time, it's people that have been in med device sales for 10 plus years that... I have the same job title or I'm above and that they're giving me the slack. And the reason I'm just saying that, that's going to have somebody watch this and they're going to be offended. They're going to be like, this guy, he's a jerk or whatever it is. And I can just sit here and tell you, I hear it every single day because people get intimidated by people who are hungrier than them, that are willing to outperform and that are willing to work more than them. That may be due to your job and where your family is and your life and all that stuff. But what I will sit here and tell you, there's a lot of excuses with people. And what I'll sit here and tell you, if you are a person watching this podcast, you're this far into this podcast, you're probably not a person who's just like, I just want to sit and see what happens with my life. You're probably a type A personality who's like, I'm going to make the life that I want to have happen. I'm not going to sit here and wait for results. I'm going to go get the results. And I can sit here and tell you, there's a lot of people in med device sales that are the exact opposite. Everyone always asks me, how do you have success? How have you been so successful? Because I didn't wait. I didn't stop. I still checked my phone like I told you guys when I had to. I didn't go, oh, you know what? Got a message at 5 p.m. It's quitting time. I'm going to wait till 8 a.m. Because I know a lot of reps who do that. I know a lot of reps who don't return an email. I know a lot of reps and a lot of people in this industry who can't do what they say they're going to do. If you can just say what you're going to do and do what you say you do, and you can do all of that stuff, you can be really good at it. You can be a self-starter. You can be proactive. You can learn what the job titles are. You can learn what you need to do to be very good at what you do, and then actually go do it you will have success in this industry. There's always going to be people, no matter if it's in med device sales, what industry you do, the moment you start having success, you'll have people not enjoy that. And they'll probably come after you. They'll probably say things about that. Let me just tell you, that's how you know you're doing good. So keep going. That is the last thing I'll just say on this episode because it got me really excited about this is I'll never forget when I got in one of my biggest accounts, somebody lied about what I said. We had calls with my regional manager. They were trying to kick me out and all this stuff. And I talked to one of my really good friends who is a top performing rep. And I was like, man, I don't know what's going on. I just wanted to get your opinion. And he looked at me and he said, know how I know you're going to be a really great rep. And I I was like, why? He's like, because we're having this conversation right now. Because guess who's not going to be a top performer? People who don't push the envelope. When you push the envelope, it means you're trying. It's because you care. It's because you're trying to actually be really good at what you do. And there's a lot of people in this industry, not just med device sales, but like, I mean, like the scrub techs, the nurses, the people that are trying to hold you back that suck at what they do. They don't like people who are really go-getters and all that. So that can be lines. But if you are pushing the envelope, it can show that you're going to be really good. So that I just, hopefully that encourages somebody that's listening to this. 
I don't know if you're just starting and where it's at. I'm not sitting here, go say cross lines. I'm not sitting here and say that you're going to go and get in trouble and go, try to go and get in trouble. But make sure that you're somebody who's passionate about what you do, that you love it every single day, that you want to make the best career that you can, that you can help people that are on the table or the patients that you're working with and be the best resource to your staff and your surgeons. Go be that person. And guess what? Let the other people in the industry and then the other people in your company talk. That's all right. But you'll know that you're doing the right thing. So I just want to say that. And to finish off with my friends, never stop learning. I'll be in this industry 15 years. I still won't stop learning. Every single day in life, you know, my, one of my favorite conversations is just talking with my grandma. And my grandma's learning every single day. And then she tells me what I should learn. And she's, she's telling me what she's learning. And it's just cool. It's just like in life, we never stop learning. So I hope that you found this encouraging. Send this to somebody you f- think that it will be helpful for. You can press that like and subscribe button. It really does help us. And if you know anybody who's interested in breaking into medical device sales, We have a podcast, New to Medical Device Sales. Our average rep breaks in in 8.2 weeks. As of the recording of today is $94,478. The one last thing I'll say on that is we actually have had reps who are working at distributorships or smaller companies that aren't where they want to be join that course because we've helped them get full line rep positions. We've helped them come in at the way higher than what they were currently making because we had that experience. I've been able to do that. So if you guys are interested, please feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. You guys can click the link below. But I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you go after your goals. I hope you keep crushing it. Keep living your best lives. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.